Hello, welcome, good morning, and thank you. See, we still need that. All right. I need to figure out how I can knight her drex. Good morning, gentlemen, by the way, and thank you so much for being here. Uh, and it's a lovely day today. Happy modding, everybody. So, yeah, just going through the normal startup stuff, including an early sound check. <laughs> Uh, we got today's intro music by some very talented individuals, and uh, I should actually change that because it's not really intro music, just music that we got going on. <clears throat> All right, yeah, and uh, I didn't actually have much time to look up a non-Morrowind thing that was really interesting today, so not doing it today. Uh, gonna look at MOMWCLI shortly. What's that? Uh, our friend Sector, Section 8, uh, has produced a highly fascinating Lua mod that uh, I think he's calling Balder Wind at the moment. Um, we'll potentially take a look at that. <clears throat> Excuse me. And then we'll move into doing the uh, CFG Generator Refactor, which is thanks to the valiant efforts of Gonzo and Hudrex. Um, we're getting really close to, you know, being able to ship that. So, um... I thought today we could actually look at actually writing the code for the CFG generator. What it's going to look like now in its vastly simplified hack-free form, believe it or not. It will be so. Uh, and then in the second half of the stream, we can move into looking at the mod roundup for the list update. Which, <clears throat> excuse me, um, we can look at some recent updates of things that we already added, including some voice acting getting added to a mod that we already added. So, yeah, more on that later. All right, and then, yeah, of course, we'll deploy the website if we need to. So, oh, it just occurred to me, I forgot to open my browser. I'm, like, really unprepared today, folks. <laughs> Bear with me. Uh, yeah, so the first thing I was talking about that I sort of teased at is, uh, M-O-M-W-C-L-I. What's that, Johnny? Well, I'm glad you asked. I'll explain. Watched me on this stream at any point in the past. You might have seen me use a... Well... This thing, basically. This little run.sh thing. And I give it a couple different options to quickly, you know, switch between lists, right? Like I might do a, oh no, we're going to do a total overhaul now, or... You know, maybe we'll do Starwind or, or whatever. And it's, you know, it's kind of how I jump all over the place quickly. Um, so the MOMW CLI is sort of the <clears throat> formalization of that into something that's actually usable by not me. So uh, we'll look at that momentarily. As I get logged in to my browser here. Oh, GitLab, come on, you're killing me. All right. Hey, Detail Devil! I'm so glad you're here. Doing okay, thank you. How are you? Uh, welcome to the stream today. It's a lovely day. And I was actually just, yeah, uh, speaking about uh, a little project that I started noodling on. Uh, barely wrote any code for it, but it's sort of this idea of uh, the realization of what I use here to launch OpenMW basically in any configuration really quickly, right? Like I can be like a oh, total overhaul or, or uh, you know, let's say uh, uh, I Heart Vanilla, boom, you know, and launch me in Sagerth Mora, everybody's favorite city, right? Um, and so what I'm planning to do, um, I've spoken with Gonzo and Herdrex about this a little bit, is um, basically provide a way for people to use this um, in conjunction with, uh, whoa, -ho, here we go. In conjunction with what we're going to provide on the website from the CFG generator. And Detail Devil says, I'm fine, thanks. Just made some coffee, enjoying the stream. Yeah, all right, well, cheers. Uh, and I'm glad you're here, and I'm glad you're enjoying the stream. So, yeah, we're going to just take a quick look at this thing that I got here. Uh, using Go, uh programming language for this thing but um even just sort of defining the data structure for the config kind of gives us a high level view about what it's going to do here right 
Um, you can define the content list. So this is sort of like, uh, you know, here where I say I heart vanilla at the bottom, you know, it's sort of like that. Um, we have defaults, right? So if you just run it with nothing, what's it going to do? Where's your Delta plugin? Where's your ground cover? Where's your I and I importer launcher light fixes, etc. Um, all the things somebody would reasonably need to do when they're setting up a heavily modded setup, you know, um, this thing is going to help them do, hopefully. Nav mesh and so forth. Uh, Perl, which is, you know, even even on my Linux setup, I have to do shenanigans to get Waza's light fixes to work. So, yeah, anyway, this is just a preview. This is about all I have here. Um, you know, I haven't really done... Just set some command. It's going to start out as a command line program, but eventually uh, I would like to build it into a graphical program. Um, and as I discussed with Gonzo and Herdrex, I'd like to build that with Godot Engine, I think. Um, we'll have a nice little GUI program that can talk with this thing under the hood and uh, give people a nice experience. <clears throat> Will this, will this modify the settings file automatically, Detail Devil asks. Yes, actually, the thing will be built to, by default, run OpenMW in portable mode. Actually, I think it's going to do that all the time. And so what it will do is, on principle, it will take a settings file uh, that you provided and it will launch that into your portable install. Um, in the future graphical version of this, um, we can have settings uh, selection similar to what OpenMW Launcher does now, with the advantage that we could easily switch to like a text editor like this, right? Like if you're if you're checking the boxes and using a dropdown and stuff like you get, uh, let's see here. You know, like, let's say we're using an interface that's kind of like this, right? And we're selecting things, but we want to drop down to this kind of a text interface. We could do that all in one place um, with Godot. Uh, so it's really exciting, uh, the things that we can do. But that's like, you know, 2091 kind of. Uh, <laughs> that sounds fantastic. Less manual work is always welcome. Step forward. Yeah, absolutely. As, you know, somebody who is fine with manual, and that's how I do things, I think this will be great though, because I actually am not manual, right? Uh, the fact that I have this little helper script thing here, this is not manual. This is automating a lot of painful things, you know? And indeed, everything in my setup that I have, merging objects, ground coverify, I've automated at some level. And so this idea is sort of the unification of all that and, and then giving it to the world to use themselves. So it's gonna be a minute before it's usable, but, um, because it's not going to be, you know, as simple. It's just launching OpenMW, right? Um, but even that, you know, we want to make sure that we're thoughtful and it's easy to use but also powerful. So anyway, that's just a tiny, tiny, tiny little preview at uh, MOMW CLI, which eventually I want to build out into um, something more, you know, uh, for people that can utilize what we're doing on the website directly um, in various ways. So, yeah, uh, if you're... <laughs> We should just go into this right now. Let me find the link and uh, and I'll install it. But uh, if you're on, let's see here. If you're on the Discord server, you may have seen Sector chat about this. All right, get me out of here. All right. Balder window, he's calling it. Um, let's go into here. Uh, we'll put this in my etc. folder for now. And I actually didn't get to try this yet. So we're doing it live on the stream right now. And if you didn't see this on the Discord server, well, this is effectively a, a mod that aims to turn the combat into kind of a turn-based format, hence the name Balder, if you're not familiar, Balder's Gate, Balderwind. Um, so let's go ahead and set that up here. Whoop. <laughs> Whoopsies. Don't try that at home. That's a clipboard fail if I ever saw one. All right. Um, and yeah, it's a pure Lua mod. 
Never Winter Nights might have also worked. Yeah, yeah, I don't know if that's the final name. Uh, hopefully Sector will pop in here and we can noodle on that. All right, well, <clears throat> excuse me. Shall we? We shall. Here we go. <laughs> and don't mind the water, too. I'm kind of experimenting with ways to squeeze a better frame rate out of my potato while not streaming naturally. And uh, disabling basically all reflections was one kind of... And refraction was kind of one thing I tried to cheat getting F, uh, frames back. Our friend the vanilla water. Okay, well anyways, let's first see if we got a we got any options here. Okay, no options. Let's get into a fight. Give myself a reasonable speed. I think I'm at like eight thousand speed just for testing purposes. My cheater character. Okay, let's find a fight, shall we? Give myself a weapon. Just Elton brand. That'll do. All right, let's find a crab. Hmm, something happened. All right, what do we got here? Indeed, something happened. Okay, well, I had a doubt was the script working or not, but here we go, it's working. We can see it's spamming the console at least. Hmm. Sector help. <laughs> All right, well, let's try another one. Maybe my che maybe it doesn't like my cheater character. You know? Um Well, let's try another crab. Yeah. It's not your turn. <laughs> Whoops. All right, let's uh, let's make the console visible again. Yeah, you can see something's happened there quite a bit. Checking AI data, a couple of times a frame, probably. Okay. Huh. Well, we'll have to revisit this once I figure out what to do. Um, you know, I'm going to do one more thing. I'm going to load up 0 0.48. <clears throat> Excuse me, 0 0.48. I know he's primarily developing for that, so more folks will be inclined to use it. There we go. Um, oh, shoot. There we go. Okay. Action. All crabs must die. Here we go. Nuts. Yeah, it's supposed so it's supposed to on an implementation level, it's supposed to like freeze the simulation time of the engine and effectively simulate turns like I go, you go. When I <laughs> when I envisioned this idea, I was thinking Dragon Quest because I'm just grew up with Dragon Quest games and, and so I was thinking, yeah, we need we need to pause the game, we need some like really thematic battle music. Um and, and indeed maybe we can do that eventually. But yeah, it doesn't seem to be working now. Okay. That's a bummer. It's installed and doing something. I don't know what though. So okay. Well we took a look. We tried. All right, now into the code base. Um, and as I mentioned, we have been working on a new data format that's going to make it possible for us to show, for example, excuse me, whew, <laughs> that coffee, <laughs> it gets you. We can see different information for a mod based on if it, we're looking at its position in a mod list. So you can see the URL here lists iHeartVanilla1. We're on a mod list, iHeartVanilla, position one. Or are we looking at just the page for the mod? 
<clears throat> with potentially all information. Hey, Fane. Good day. Welcome. Glad you're here today. It's good to see you again. Uh, just looking at some new changes we've been working on. And yeah, so this view of the mod here, where look, the URL you can see is mods patch for purist. So we can use that information we get from the URL to decide what we're rendering on the page. And indeed, that's just what we're doing. So um, at present, though, you'll note there's no there's no usage notes here. So actually, excuse me, let's put something in there first. I think that would be an easy first thing to crack that will uh, that will make a big splash because that will affect every mod page, including the two types I just showed. So okay, let's go there. Templates. Bit. Oh, oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> just. Now it occurred to me with this, so this is my editor, by the way, down here in the corner. My editor is asking me if I want to trust some code that I wrote that could be potentially spicy, right? Like I, I could have put something in there that steals my, I don't know, something I don't want stolen. And and so, um, but I, uh, I'm okay with it. This is just me telling my editor to treat HTML files a certain way. So we're going to go ahead and supply and permanently mark these exclamation. Thank you, Emacs. Ah, there we go. This is the file I need. Okay. Um, what I was going to say, though, is actually this past week, Emacs 29 came out. We're just going to take a real quick diversion. And we're going to, yeah, Emacs 29. And... The release notes are actually really huge. Um, I can actually see it. Hold up. News. Uh, Emacs news mode. Huh. That's not what I wanted. Okay. That's not at all. I don't want to. You can view it in Emacs somehow. I shamefully don't know how. But anyway, Emacs 29 dropped. Um, uh, some cool stuff in there, including, I believe... Use package now comes in the editor. We got tree sitter, tree sitter built in, um, and a couple of other really neat things. Icon support, so I got like icons appearing where they weren't before now. Um, yeah, so I did that. I of course upgraded, and we're looking at Emacs 29 right now. Yippee! Uh, and I, as far as upgrade pains, had to upgrade a few packages that I use, but everything generally just worked. Todd would be proud. All right, let's try this again. There we go. So, all right. What's the deal? Why don't we have usage notes here? I don't understand. Usage notes. Well, there we go. Mod usage notes. This is no longer accessed that way. Oop. Oh, yeah. Okay, well, <laughs> so there was one hiccup with my Emacs upgrade that's kind of been an ongoing pain, which is that the Python support is just getting worse and worse and worse. And it's really, it's, you know, I can do like, and just like the autocomplete is utterly broken now. It just doesn't do anything. I don't know. Language servers running, Pyrite, everything's there. I don't know what happened. It's really irritating. It's just another... You know, yeah, you know, and so um, last night I'm writing some Go for the CLI, and man, look at this. It's so fast, you know, just boom, you know, everything you want, boom, 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 you know, just, oh, I love writing Go so much. It's, the tooling is great, and yeah, the a fan says, oh, that's sad. Gonzo says, oh, man, yeah, it is, because, I mean, I don't hate Python. Obviously, my website is written in Python. A lot of cool stuff is Python. MLOX is Python. Rybash is Python. But this is like, uh, oh wait, I got something here. Hang on. No, that's like a Golang completion carrying over. You see what I mean? Like the Python support, it's just jank. It's Todd levels of it just works. Yeah, wow, it's actually completing from my Go code here. That's awkward. So, anyways, um, though, the relation of a usage note to a mod is defined right here from a foreign key. Uh. So how do we put that in the template? I don't actually know off the top of my head, but we can figure that out pretty easily. Check it out. 
we will just drop into the shell. We will pull out a mod. Better robes. All right. There we go. Usage notes set. There we go. I think we can actually set what it calls that here, this usage notes set. Um, that's how in, so we're using Django Python framework here for the website. That's how you kind of get like a back reference, right? We are setting the relation here on the usage note from the mods perspective. Um, this is how we can reach back and see how many relate to us, right? Uh, so what we do here then, it's set count zero. Let's just see what that gets us. That should get us the thing on the page at least. No, no, not quite yet. Right? Or did I goof something? Yeah, okay. <clears throat> Excuse me. Let's try something. <laughs> okay, there we go. <laughs> right, this is called an extreme sanity check right here. Is anything at all working? Yes, it is. All right. Um, so, this is what we got to do. This is getting up to be a little too crazy for the template, for the HTML, in my opinion, right? We don't want to do too much of this nonsense. We should just easily be able to say, is it there or is it not? If it is, render it. So, let's do it in a nice way or try to. Oh, this would be a dynamic page. Okay, whoop. See what I mean? Python geeking out on me again. Here we go. Whenever it's ready, I suppose. Enjoy your coffee. Mamma mia. Yeah. This is awkward. <laughs> I'm gonna give it just a few more seconds, uh, but this is what I'm talking about. I gotta really do something. So probably what I'll do tonight is I will rip out language server from Python and I'll go back to, yeah, oh no, uh, empty coffee cup. Actually, yeah, the mug is actually like in the other room and Smalio isn't here to like, hold up, give me one second. Oh no, <laughs> there's nothing in here even. Well, all right. Uh, all right, well, unfortunately my confidence in it coming back or not is almost none at this point. Um, and I don't understand what's going on. If I look at, so let's, let's look together at the process manager here. Yeah, I don't even see Emacs doing anything up here. So we actually wouldn't see Emacs. There it is. Pyrite language server. Right there. You see that right there? Node Pyrite language server. But it's not even really, it's just a little bit of, it's a little bit of CPU it's using, 10%, you know. But I mean, really geeking out up here is is OBS doing its thing, which, you know, we kind of expect. I don't know. I don't know what's happening. Why, 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 why? This is levels of bizarre that I think Todd would be proud of, perhaps. So yeah, I don't know. Well, he's dead, Jim. This is what we're gonna do. And this is why I like to run Emacs in a da as a daemon. Yeah, yeah, Gonzo says, OBS using a conservative 350% of my CPU. Yeah, that, that good old software encoding. <laughs> if I had a real, you know, if I actually loved my, lugged my gaming PC over here, actually not in that case because my graphics card is from before they had hardware encoding on Linux with AMD graphics cards. Um, but in theory, if I had a graphics card that supported hardware encoding, I could do that and you would see, in theory, a lot less usage. Or if I used Windows, and then I would just have that with whatever graphics card I had. Um, all right, well, here's what we're going to do. P-grep. Yeah, see, I've done this before. 
Yeah, doing video encoding without hardware support is a struggle for sure, Afane says. Yeah, and I will note, too, I've been talking with some folks about, you know, when we're going to do the next uh, total overhaul tour video. And the main challenge with that really is rendering, right? Especially when I'm software encoding, you know, that's like a four hour ordeal f for a 10 minute video that's a high quality, you know? Anyways, you can see I've done this before. It's in my history. So what's gonna happen is I'll have to kill Emacs or I can just kill Pyrite. It's not running, good. Do I regain, good, okay. Excellent. Okay, this is this is a better result than I expected. Server Pyrite exited. Okay, wait a minute. Um, it says check the error buffer. That's a good idea. Let's do that. <sighs> Finished. So it detected that I booted it. I gave it the boot. Good job, I guess. <laughs> All right, so here we go. Let's try it again. Uh, next time I'm just going to say no because it's not giving me anything anyways. You know, look. Except for another freeze. All right, that's it. No. Just let me edit in peace, for the love of Todd. All right. Yeah, so, so, so I'm getting rid of this, and we're going to go back to... They used to have something called Jedi. Some guy wrote for, uh, for Python support. Worked very well for many years, uh, until LSP worked better. Until LSP didn't, which is now. Um... Ah, that's a really good point, Afain says. Maybe it wants a newer Pyrite version, so check this out. Uh, as I was doing this recently. <laughs> um, so I have a rolling release Linux distro, which means that they try to have the newest versions of things pretty regularly. <clears throat> They're not as hardcore as Arch, which is usually... I'm not saying Arch doesn't test, but they tend to move a little faster than my distro, which is called Void. And you can see right here we got Pyrite, 1.1321. Let's go see what the newest version is. And maybe this trail will lead us down to, you know, maybe Pyrite is not to be used anymore. Um, well, it seems like it's pretty current. Okay. 1.1.322. So, yeah, we are one version behind. This was released yesterday. Uh, well, that was a good thought. Definitely are we behind on Pyrite. We are one version behind, but not that much. Um, yeah, pretty sad. This is like sad cat emoji time right now, because I don't even know. <clears throat> Excuse me. Switch to Arch from Manjaro uh, after you got tired of reverting several updates. Yeah, okay. Wow, cool, Afane. That's, yeah, I use Arch... Um, uh, in a Docker, because I publish a couple AUR packages, and so, good distro. Uh, yeah, Linux things, you know it, Gonzo. <laughs> people using Windows right now are scratching their head, they're just like, what are you even talking, what are you insane people even talking about? Yeah, trust me, you don't want to know. <laughs> so anyways, what the heck were we even doing? We were trying to put the usage notes on the page in a sane way. That doesn't kill performance, that doesn't make the code look like spaghetti, Already started to do it here. The moment I brought the equal, the greater than sign in, I started to like, my skin started to crawl. Hey, <laughs> Linux, it just works, except when it doesn't, Afane says. Yeah, I, I mean, you know, I've been using Linux for like 15 years, so I know how to not break things pretty well. But every now and then things still break, case in point. <laughs> I was so excited to update Emacs and get Tree Sitter, and now I got this. I need a t-shirt. <laughs> all right mod list detail that's right so i have taken a step back in the website code base if you're not familiar we have python functions that represent what happens on each page and for the mod list detail page which happens to be not this one but this one again noted by the url having the list path in it it's handled by this one conveniently called mod list detail thank you past me for having some sanity so in here we can just say it's cheaper to do these things in the back end with python code than it is in, uh, in the template here which 
is a little bit slower. And some things we can avoid hitting the database multiple times. So anytime you do this with a period like this, and especially across a set, you're hitting the database. And hitting the database costs performance. I have a very tiny cheapo server, possibly one of the cheapest, cheapest that we can have. And, and I don't want to upgrade it <laughs> if I don't have to. And we serve a lot of traffic as is, and I feel like we can just keep going, you know. Um, so let's try not to beat on the poor database too much, even though I'm doing it constantly now that I look. Um, <clears throat> back to here. So we should send away something called, I don't know, usage notes. which is going to be empty for right now. Okay. And what we're going to do is we'll just we'll add a new little section down here, kind of keep things grouped, and we'll say um, if mod, right? Is this fire? Oh, no. I'm in the completely wrong. Huh. Get with it, Johnny. I am in the completely wrong function. This, this, excuse me, if I can read mod list detail, it's actually the mod, excuse me, it's the mod list, not the mod in the list detail. Excuse me, wow. I'm about to joke over here. Let's try that again. Here we go. This makes a lot more sense. And I've been digging in here recently, as you can see. I'm like wondering, what the, what the heck did I just say? <laughs> None of it makes any sense. This makes more sense. So what we got here is the new way of finding just the plugins that we need. Um, let's first verify, though. Do we get our message from Todd? No. But here we do. Hello, Todd. Yes. Very good. Sanity check. Clearly I need one. Possibly more caffeine, but I don't know. We're out of luck on that front. And I don't think it's a two pots of coffee kind of a day. French press running on empty. Extremely large French press, too, by the way. This is bigger than my head. Well, close to bigger than my head. I have a big head. <laughs> uh, it's my neighbor's quinceanera party today, too, by the way, so I'm really looking forward to that. Hello, Gladys. Happy late birthday. So what's the one I actually... Well, we can... We can I'll tell you what. We can go ahead and get this one here. So, usage notes will be mod usage notes set we're just going to do that and so what this is going to give us see I like how I still I still get some sanity checking I don't need language server so taking a step back I'm talking about my editor right now just because I'm a little irritated about the python stuff not working I'm still getting a very nice check here it's telling me that my local variable is not used Thank you, Emacs. So I don't need language server for everything. That is something called fly check. That is, well, it's fly. Fly check doing its thing, though. Now let's just do that. So we're going to ding the database. Taking a step back, when we, when somebody makes a request to the website, what does that look like? What does the code of the website do? We have user. They hit the server front end, which is my HTTP server. We'll call it Nginx. And that goes to Python. And Python gives me access to a couple of things here. Actually, if we go back here, we can see right here I get past the request, which is the information about you. 
what you want from me. And separated out of that is the slug, which is this part right here, patch dash four dash purists. This request thing comes with all kinds of stuff. Um, I can know your IP address. I can know your user agent, which gives me a hint about your operating system. Google wants to do away with that, though, because they probably have their own way to get it. I can get all kinds of stuff. We're not going to look at that right now, though. It's a big blob of things that I mostly don't care about. Um, we pass it along, though, just because this is how Django works. Django, we juggle the request around for Django. Um, it's the least I can do. But we use this slug, as you can see right here, to get the mod that we're talking about. This thing pokes into the database looking for a mod with the slug of the slug that they gave us. And uh, as you may have guessed, we get it for 404. And if you're not familiar with what's 404, Johnny, we can go ahead and just consult with one of my favorite websites, HTTPCAT. And the 404 is the not found response code, meaning the thing that you asked for doesn't exist. And we can laugh at this cute little kitty here. <laughs> and I encourage you to check other. <laughs> okay, that's enough. Easily amused here. So, so. Ooh, ah, Detail Devil, thank you. That is a fantastic question. Uh, Detail Devil says, how many of us OpenMW users are out there? Is our number growing? Do you have insight into that? Ah, yeah, well, let's take a break from Python hacking. That's a really great question, and we can certainly answer that. So if you go to my website, I encourage you to follow along at home. Just go to this page or any page on the website at the very bottom has this curious looking icon. And if you click on it, that'll take you here. Now, one note about this, you may be tempted to look at month or quarter or half year or year. Those links don't really work at the moment due to a bug in this software that I use. I'll explain more on that later. However, here you go. I mean, so this is a, this is a general view of the past week. And as you can see, we got 33,000 visitors to the website doing 38,687 page views. And what do I mean by that? A visit would be like this, and then uh, this would be two page views now. One visit, two page views, right? So um, to explain those numbers a little bit. Technically speaking, I have data that goes back... I don't know, maybe 2019. It's a real shame, honestly, that we can't look at this yearly data and look back to 2019. Um, I can upgrade to fix that problem. You get this. I can upgrade to fix that problem, but the upgrading is like really tricky and I just, I delayed doing it for like two years. I'm sorry. <laughs> well, here we are though. You can look at it at least a week ago today works. Sometimes a month will deem worthy to work and you can get a nice view of that. Um, yeah, here we go. So you can see we got in the last month 170,000 views to the website, you know, 8,500 visits to the total overhaul page. <laughs> Is there an open issue for that? Gonzo, man, good question. No, there, there used to be one when I had the issues hosted on my Gitty instance. I don't think there's one on GitLab. Do me a favor, man. Um, search for it real quick, if you don't mind, and file one, if so. So uh, I'm glad you brought this up, Detail Devil, because this has been bugging me a lot recently because I want to have access to this data. And, uh, and yeah, I can do this. It's just annoying. It's like a hard upgrade that's tricky, but I can do it. Oh, uh, <laughs> yeah, actually, so Herdrax, excellent point here, Herdrax. Excuse me. It'd be amazing if you, Gonzo, and me could be left out of the statistics. We're probably covering 30 to 40% of the traffic. Well, um, actually, I am left out of the traffic. You can tell the software to omit certain IP addresses. So if you want to let me know your guys' IPs, I can put it in there to ignore that. Um, but, yeah, I mean, as you can see, we actually have, uh, like, this just blows me away as, like, just a, you know, simple American guy from a farming town that we're reaching all these people all over the world, hundreds of people per country. I mean, look at this. Thank you, Gonzo. And, uh, and Herdrex, yeah. 
let me know. But I mean, just look at this. So maybe we're skewing the numbers a little bit. <laughs> but as you can see, it's just like Pakistan, our friends in Pakistan. Hello. I hope you get to see this. Egypt, our friends in Egypt, even Moldova, Ecuador, you know, just like uh, for sure, though. Yeah. You know, we're pad the numbers, you know, um, and I don't, you know, I just have a normal um, – <laughs> Good old unknown. Yeah, that's a great place too, though. Actually, I saw Antarctica on here one time and was like, oh, okay. We're big in Arct Antarctica. Let's see if it comes on here in Namibia. Oh, my brothers in North Macedonia. Brothers and sisters. Wow. So, yeah, I mean, <laughs> I swear I saw Antarctica on here once. I can't see it, obviously, in the past month. They're probably busy down there. <laughs> at the moment uh, but yeah even in Iran people are enjoying the what 17 views from Iran in the past month you know that's crazy so we might be padding the numbers those folks from unknown though showing up with 280 visits so anyways um going back to the question though what are our numbers like what have they gone from to um you know, honestly, the most I've seen the weekly counts at are bordering like, uh, so let's go back here. I don't want to, I don't want to lose my monthly view there. I've seen this number go as high as 100,000. The last time I remember seeing that was after 0 0.47 came out. We had that bomb release video Atahualpa and I made and just people were pumped, you know. Um, we're definitely pumped about 0 0.48. I think... I think maybe we're missing the release video a little bit and it made a little bit less of a splash. But the, not to discount the work of the team, it's phenomenal. It's the best. Every release is the best release because of these awesome people. Um, but yeah, just uh, this. so this is where we're at for the last week. This is where we're at for the last month. These are not small numbers. Um, and again, remember, it's like a single core, one CPU, one gig of RAM server, and we're just, you know, we're pumping out this traffic here. So yeah. Um, yeah, hey, Sophie, good day, and I'm glad you're here. Yeah, uh, Sophie says, I see a lot of new faces all the time. Yeah, agreed, I do too, and it's really a cool thing, um, especially when you think, like, wow, this game is now, you know, 20-plus years old, 21-plus years old. That many people still care about this game? Um, it says something. So, so anyway, we're going to, you know, we'll get this thing fixed so we can have a better view at these statistics, and people can answer that question. How many of us are out there? How are our numbers growing? Um, what kind of things are these people interested in? Because you can come here, and if you didn't know, you can come to this page here, and you can type mods, um, ship, yards, and we can see specifically, well, cool, there's, you know, in the last month, 37 hits on shipyards of Vardenfeld, specifically. Um, and we can get that kind of information easily, you know. We can filter it down to... Excuse me, just mods. Wow, Delta plugin number two. Wild. Um, yeah, so this is something. Yeah, this is something I would really. Um, it's. I've actually never gotten the Nexus stats to work on any of my mods, but I've seen it on other people's mods and it looks cool. This is not quite that cool. Um, but yeah, you know, if it worked, it's still really interesting data to know about, right? And yeah, just this list of like. All our friends all over the world, this list of countries just is mind-blowing to me personally. Again, it's like a dude from a small farm town. <laughs> it's like interacting indirectly with all these people all over the world. It's really shocking. Yeah. <laughs> all right. Well, so great question, though, Detail Devil. I really appreciate that. Um, I hope so. I'm And I'm open to ideas. I hope someday that we can better present that information to people, right? Like... How many, you know, visitors do we got today? Maybe we can feature it prominently, like on the front page or something down here. Or I, don't, I don't know. I'm getting crazy now. Okay, so anyways, though, we are now sending this along the pipe. Usage notes. But what does that give us? Does that do what I want it to do? Let's see. Still no, but I wonder if I'm being blocked by the cache. We'll just keep going. And I'm going to 
actually cheat. I'm going to cheat a little bit. Boom, nothing. Okay. Good. Boom. All right. We have no usage notes for Patch for Purist? That's wrong. Hold up. Who Drax, you've been working on that. You can probably tell me. Oh, no, I. Really? We really don't. <laughs> yeah, what? Wow, that's wild. <laughs> All right, let's, let's go snag that. Ooh, no, please don't. All right, cool, man. No biggie. I'm getting language servered here again. Oh, me, oh, my. Yeah, I need to... We're gonna have to do a little bit of surgery on my Emacs server in a moment here. Uh, patch. If I can type right. Four purists. Ah, right here at the top. Boom, yeah, here we go. They must have snuck right out underneath you, my man. Excuse me. I'm gonna put them in right here. Ah, excuse me. Detail Devil asks, excellent question. One OpenM user, one OpenMW user equals one unique IP address. Not necessarily. Um, for example, if we were all hanging out in the same place and, and using the website from the same place, we would have the same IP. Um, depending on like what your internet setup is like, you know, you might share IPs with people around you. It's not a given. Um, in, it's common, though, that you wouldn't have, for example, even if you have a, just a dynamic IP, you wouldn't have the same IP as your neighbor, perhaps, uh, Sophia. Yeah, okay. And if you use a VPN, that would change your IP, uh, too. So maybe that's, a, that's actually a good point. If you used a VPN, that might change your IP on the regular if it's a good VPN, you know. Um, so you might actually be coming from a different IP, a different country. You'd be coming from unknown today in Antarctica, Antarctica tomorrow. Um, so, yeah. IP address, not necessarily the best way to single out, you know, one-to-one. -one. Um, let's go ahead and pull this out. Mm -mm. Yep, yep. A fan, yep. VPN, dynamic IP, Gary or grade, NAT. Wow, that's a little bit of my <laughs> networking knowledge. Uh, but indeed, there's all kinds of things. Um, internet is pretty wild. Carrier, Garrier, okay, can't, <laughs> can't still. So yeah, that's exactly what I was talking about, though. Okay, um, how your provider handles, you know, giving you the internet at a very high level. Uh, that's what we're talking about, right? So okay, this is a nice look at how we're gonna handle adding usage notes to mods um, in the future. And so we'll simply just we have a separate data as I talked about on prior streams. Format forum. And we'll gank this out of here. But we can also <sighs> fun times. Here we go. Quirks of data formats. We gotta escape our double quotes. That was a fun little adventure that we've all enjoyed. Am I right? Um, but yeah, so we can now say, check this out, we can say, I'm just doing an example here, well, uh, uh, let's see, this applies to all mod lists, so we're not going to do this, and I don't want to waste time crunching data, unfortunately, but what we can say, for example, here in, for a, of eggs and dwarves, Nisus Eggmine, Bethamez Overhaul, excellent mod, by the way, by our friend Seeloff, G7, and company. Um, yeah, no worries, Hudrex. I got this one. It's actually a decent example to do on the stream, right? Um, but yeah, this excellent mod by our friends uh, in the modding community. If you haven't tried it yet, 
you got to have it. Um, but here, as you can see, it's in two mod lists. And um, we're saying, you know, some specific information about it. Maybe we'll say something specific to total overhaul, you know, uh, on here, for example. Uh, we can do that now. All right. So on here, this one actually applies to all mod lists. This one, too, actually. I would say this applies to all mod lists. Um, we're going to nuke that out of there just as an example. So, yeah. Now we do my favorite thing, which is delete all the data on the website and re-put it back in there. And uh, enjoy your beverage at this time. And, wow, time is flying a little bit. We're almost to the second half. Okay. So when this is done, <clears throat> excuse me, we should get something up here. And actually something down here too. It will say probably usage notes and it'll probably be blank, maybe. Yeah, yeah, good good call out, Herdrex. Says it's uh, missing the mod lists field. Did you notice that? Yes. So uh, the reason why I omitted that is because the usage notes apply to any setup. And when we list a mod list, that means that that usage note applies specifically to that mod list. I hope that makes sense. <sighs> Take another sip. Yep, and so the result of that is we're going to have for potentially, right, we would potentially have multiple usage notes. This is wrong syntax, but... You know, like this, and so each note would be represented uniquely in the data like that. Um, and that's how we'll do our magic in the Python side of things. Oop. All right, we're back. So, yeah, here we go, as I said. Usage notes, empty, good. All right, we got that. Back to the HTML now. We'll clean up our spam up here. We don't need that sanity check anymore. Good, okay. And yeah, so again, I did the database dinging in the actual Python code so we can be reasonably assured that if there are usage notes, there are usage notes. Hmm. And uh, just a quick note, if you're not familiar with, familiar with uh, Django or Jinja2 templating, what we're doing right here with this pipe safe, you can see us doing it a couple times. We're even doing something crazy down here, pipe length. These are what are called template filters. And specifically, the safe one here says, whatever you're giving me, whatever you're giving me, I am treating it as HTML and rendering it as such. Now, why is, why is that important? Because if I'm taking data from random users on the internet, like I got a form and you can put stuff in there, users can and will, bad people can and will put bad things in there to try and break your website and, you know, do bad things. And so in that case, when you're taking input from users, you would chop that off because it's not safe. See what I'm saying? They'll put, you know, SQL, query. that's what's called SQL injection, all kinds of things. Um, but, Johnny, why are you marking this as safe? Ah, uh, yes, thank you for asking. Uh, actually, we know this is safe because it comes from our data sort that is in the website code base. There's no possibility of bad people doing bad things here. We know that 100%. So that's why we can just indiscriminately say it's safe. It's fine. Give me the HTML that we are stuffing into the data right here, right? So what does that look like on the page? Well, yeah. <laughs> all right, all right, hold up. 
what happened? Well, I'm not getting just text back, actually. I'm getting a list of usage notes. So let's do this. For note, whoops. Nice, see? You don't need, see, this is, I don't have language server running right now, but you'll note it actually closed these guys right here for me. Thank you, web mode. Anyways, for, for note in usage. Whoa, whoa, what am I doing here? Somebody stop me. Holy smokes. Now that I'm in the right section. For note in usage notes. And for... See what it looks like if we make it unsafe. Ooh, excellent. Okay, excellent. What's that? I don't understand. Why am I getting that? So we have not yet actually extracted the text. Turns out we do still have to hit up the database a little bit, but this is in a way that we can cache it. So ah, uh, yeah. Thank you for bringing that up. Uh, Detail Devil says, "Have you heard the latest mod news? This is spoiler. Uh, this is a spoiler of something that I teased in the beginning of the stream. But here we go. Herdrax lent us his voice for the Daedric Prince Periite in Something in the Water. Yeah, I was going to actually go into that at some point, but uh, congratulations, Herdrax. I actually had the privilege of hearing the uh, at least one of the clips before the mod launch, and it was awesome. Uh, so yeah, props and congrats to our friend Herdrax, and uh, and also Detail Devil um, and Glitter Gear." For all their excellent work on something in the water, uh, definitely finding its way into the 6.x update. And yeah, totally exciting. Uh, we may yet actually look directly at that today. So thank you for bringing that up. Thank you for bringing that up. And yeah, Gonzo says regarding uh, the work here in the editor, man, this is going to be so slick. Yes, you reflect my feelings exactly. So now we are... <sighs> hey, <laughs> Fane says, plot twist. Hudrax is actually Periite. Whoa. <laughs> All right, so now we're properly extracting the text from the database with this code right here. Note the period. And we're hitting the text field in the database. What does that give us? Usage notes, yay, look, here it is. And you'll note, <clears throat> because we have not yet told the template that it is safe, we're getting HTML. So let's go ahead and tell it it's safe. Shazam. And there we go. Just like that. And so I think this is actually worth an example. Um, these usage notes apply to every mod list. Excuse me. But let's pretend they don't. Let's pretend that these notes only apply to these two mod lists. All the fault of Glitter Gear and DD, amazing collab on their part. This is my favorite thing about the hobby. I was playtesting it and got inspired to fire up the old studio and give it a go, Herdrax says. Yeah, nice. And if you didn't know, Herdrax is actually a highly skilled video producer um, who does some pretty amazing work. Um, we got to put your channel link in here somewhere. But uh, yeah, it's cool. Very cool. I loved seeing that. was a pleasant surprise. More mods should have voice acting because it really does... Like, it's easy as an old snob to be snobby and say, no, we don't need voice acting. We can just read. But honestly, like, good voice acting really lends quality and atmosphere to a mod, you know. And I really love it when I'm seeing it. So, um, and this mod was great, you know. <laughs> so we can only benefit by it. I was actually disappointed when I first played it uh, that Periite didn't have spoken audio. And now, like, here we are. So this is really great. And looking forward to seeing it again because I only saw the Mod Jam version, so I haven't really seen some of the updates. Nice. Yeah, yeah, agreed. DD writes for the actors. His prose oozes rhythm. It's awesome. I have to agree. I mean, when I played uh, Detail Devil's Mod Jam entry, which was uh, the, uh, the, the melody of melody, let's see, uh, melodies and moonlight, I felt like, yeah, Certainly some love. I didn't know this at the time, but Detail Devil loves Sadrith Mora, but I could tell 
just by playing the mod of Melody's Delight. Thank you, sir. I could tell that Detail Devil loves Sagerth, Sager, Sagerth Mora, and the dialogue here on the characters was just really awesome. So, yeah, props. Well done. I'm looking forward to seeing the new content. All right, what do we got here? So I went ahead and broke the usage notes. Now, you'll know we're looking at just the mod detail, independent of any mod list right here, and it is rendering it because, again, that's the intention, right? If you're just looking at this page, it's going to give you the steps for every mod list. Now, if we're looking at it in the context of iHeart Vanilla, though, again, you can note the URL up here. We refresh the page, and suddenly our usage notes are gone. And again, what this means is that users following a mod list are only going to see information directly related to what they need to know to do things on the list, right? So if mod list A needs you to delete that file, but mod list B needs you to keep that one, but use that plugin, we can easily convey that now with this system. So yeah, what you're seeing is this sort of in action. Very clean. Yes, I agreed. So let's go ahead and delete that out there though. And um, let's go ahead and re... Whoop. Hey, Section 8, good day and welcome. Yeah, welcome, welcome. We actually tried to look at uh, Balderwind a little earlier and it just wouldn't stop for me. But this is the CFG Gen stuff. Yes, yes it is. Um, <laughs> yeah. Maybe we'll look at Balderwind uh, shortly here because we're bleeding into the new stuff time. And actually, it's that time where I gotta sit down. So let's uh, do that, huh? Okay, cool. Yeah, I kind of figured that my version was a little uh, <laughs> a little outdated. I just took the zip that you put on the Discord channel um, a couple of days ago. So I'll just get it from the repo. You want to put the repo link in the chat for me, please? And for the benefit of everybody else following along here. And yeah, this is a really exciting one. So this is... um. I feel like the mod lists need, and I've talked about this with Ezzy, Ezzy Tabby, if you're in our uh, Discord channel. This is my good friend who did the Guard Hounds mod and other great works. Thank you very much. And um, we were thinking that we needed like uh, some kind of an interesting additions section, right? Like stuff that maybe not everybody wants to add, but like that would potentially be really a good addition. This Balderwind thing or Open Nevermind are perfect examples of things that would fit there, right? Because maybe not everybody wants to play turn-based, but well, quite a few people would, I think. So uh, let's just pull this up here. Haha, <laughs> right. Cool, cool. Let's grab it. Okay. Games, OpenMW, mods. I'm going to just gonna call this a combat mod for now, but I don't know. How would you categorize this? Ooh, Section 8 started streaming yesterday. Very cool. Lucky to catch the debut. It was supposed to be about gaming and coding, but for some reason became geopolitics and work ethics. Oof, all right. Well, <laughs> maybe when I join the crowd next time, because I was working. I saw you streaming yesterday, but I was doing the old day job thing. Uh, when I join, we'll have it be the Emacs episode. Not your first one. Okay, doing it for a few weeks. Cool. Plug your channel. Or if you're streaming on Twitch or whatever, plug it, plug it my friend and plug it on uh discord if you want all right um let's get that code sweet awesome okay so uh let's try this again then oh on your okay starwind initiative right that's tsi Yep, awesome, cool, okay. You Starwind kids, Starwind multiplayer. All right, well, before we get into the 6.x goodness, let's take a look at this uh, turn-based combat, shall we? This is exciting. 
<laughs> and I was saying before you joined earlier, I was saying we need when I first envisioned this mod, I had Dragon Quest in mind, you know, and I was thinking we needed like some uppity combat music. You know how the Dragon Quest games have like a epic combat music. You need something like that. Uh, oh, yeah, actually. And I mentioned this. Uh, it's another thing I forgot. See, I was totally not prepared. We'll look at it in a minute. I'm going to pull the URL up. Um, but actually, a good friend of mine happens to be a musical composer. And it's the same friend uh, who is... Uh, I don't have the URL handy. Uh, he is, though, he and I have for years been planning a totally original RPG that will be made with OpenMW. He has done 90% of the work. I'm like moral support, really. <laughs> but he, he like includes me as part of the process, and I'm lucky. Um, but yeah, we are going to want to cover that, too, as like a non, yeah, as a non-Morrowind project. All right, here we go. Are we ready? Let's get, uh, let's just throw Elton Brand back on there. Yeah, here we go. All right. What's happening? Help. Oh, no creatures. That would be it then. Okay, so yeah, okay, okay. That makes sense. Go to Edemasartus. So it shall be. No big deal. Just got like 4,000 acrobatics. All right. Vup. Oh, did I do a, a bad thing by going into this with no weapon drawn? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> I'm stuck. Help. <laughs> okay. All right, all right. Hold on. We're going to try this again. <laughs> cool. <laughs> Stacking initiative really high, yeah. All right. Ah, uh, you know what? Hold on. I am, like, repeatedly annoyed by this. So let's go ahead and... Um, this, folks, if you're not familiar, is my cheat file, which is what I do when I, uh, when I go into testing mode. These are just the things that I cheat myself into. So, okay. I'm going to keep the god mode, the Todd mode. But we're going to lose the high speed. Actually, we'll take speed down to just 90. So that way I'm not too turtly slow. All right. Here we go. Oh, ran into the mud crab and confused it. Okay. Okay. Let's get on it. And I just... Uh, oh, wait. No, okay, so we're on 0 0.48 right now. No ripple. I was going to marvel at the ripple, and it's not there. All right. Big mode. Here we go. I need to actually get... Yeah, there we go. All right. I have, like, Final Fantasy combat music playing in my head right now. Uh, I still can't pull my sword out. Hmm. All right, I'm going to go in there with the sword out. Take three. My turn's stuck. <laughs> it's all, so it's a, it's a alpha. It's a beta, you know. We'll go in there with the sword out this time. I'm sorry I broke it. I think it's so cool, though, that this is a thing. After thinking about it, it's a thing. All right. Now I'm ready for battle. Come at me. 
mod conflict. Um, you know what? I don't have any mod. She is skipping turns, too. <laughs> a great mod for a pacifist run. Well, so it could be interesting, right? Nerf the haste spell, yeah. <laughs> Something happened here, though. I don't know. Wrong num number of arguments. Okay, yeah, so... We'll try it again sometime. Just so you know, though, we're not actually using any other mods. This is just my, like, the, I okay, so I, that's a lie. I have, like, Mop and Project Atlas and stuff, a couple of those asset replacers, but no content mods. So I hope Mop didn't break it. Ah, but so, yeah, in any case, still very cool. Thank you for working on this sector. It's looking, you know, the video that you showed, it looked awesome. Conflicts pretty hilariously with OpenMW. Oh, Open Nevermind. Yeah, okay. I didn't test that, but I'm also not loading that up, but I guess I kind of would expect that. Okay, well, let's go back to the plan list here, kind of. So we had a very interesting look at that. We kind of restored uh, usage notes. Kind of. We did <laughs> do that. Um, and so next up, what I would like to do, um, before we jump into the kind of the, the update extravaganza, is what I have here, you can see, as I mentioned, all the URLs are powered by a Python function under the hood, and this is the good old CFG generator. And so, if I don't end up, I'm not, I'm gonna be pretty busy tonight. I don't know if I might got that quinceanera party I'm looking forward to. If I don't have time tonight, maybe tomorrow in the stream, we can take a stab at doing this. Because um, you may remember from prior streams, this horrible section of code that did terrible things hacky things uh make a fresh video later cool thank you so much section eight i really appreciate it but this code used to be terrible but now it will be very boring simple code that will be testable most importantly and usable for some grand designs that i talked about earlier with the uh the launcher that we want to build so anyways without getting too crazy soon we will do it so uh oh. No, please. Oh no. My language server. Cheers. Section 8, you use Emacs. You got space Emacs going on. Do you know what it's doing for Python in your setup? Are you doing language server? PyWrite? PyLance, I think, is another one. Does it work for you? <laughs> oh my gosh. What's happening? All right. We're doing this again. I retain control of my editor. Thank you. PyLance. Okay. Yeah, right. That's what I was saying earlier. I'm just going to go back to He says, I've got PyLance on mine. Python mode is probably the best supported one I've tried. Yeah, I'm just going to go back to Python, regular Python mode probably because language server is good struggling right now maybe it's time to look at eglot you and i talked about this i think maybe it's time to look at that emacs is if you didn't know my second favorite engine to mod it's true okay whoa, whoa, whoa. typo Ooh. Pi LSP and rough, but I'm not picky if Ain says, oh, okay. Interesting, Pi LSP. Thank you for the tip. I might try into that. Let's see real quick here. LSP. Nope. Oh, okay, that's what Python 3 LSP server. Oh, okay. Uh, Sophie says, Zach's Lua Bounty cancel, kill all witnesses, is pretty hype. Yeah, I think Herdrex told me about that one. Uh, frankly, all the stuff Zach does is pretty awesome. <laughs> Lots of great wizardry, for sure. Um, okay, so wait. 
Uh, I don't have it installed. Bear with me here, all right? Let's see. Bear with me here. We're going to do something. We're going to uninstall Pyrite. Good. Ooh, all right. See, this is what we call, if you're not familiar in programming, there is a concept dear to my heart called rubber duck debugging. And I believe we've done that here with our friend Section 8. Ah, okay. Uh, Detail Devil says, I like that script a lot. Hope he'll put it on the Nexus. Yeah, okay. So it seems you all are a, a bit ahead of me with the Zach stuff. That's great. We might have to do a Zach stream tomorrow and just look at Zach Utils. I'm like so behind. Anyways, I, I'm over here trying to fix my editor and you guys are playing with Zach stuff already. Get with the program. I got to get with the program. All right. Maybe there is hope for me yet. I run Emacs as a daemon, as I mentioned earlier, which means that I start it as like a background thing, and then I connect to it. Also means that if I close it, I'm not really closing it. It's still open in the background. Actually, a really handy thing to happen. Sniper rifles. Oh, yeah, that's right. And, he's, and if you're not on Discord, Zach was talking about Fallout terminals in OpenMW, and he will do it, I'm sure. Uh, I had the privilege to play around with, oh, yeah, the controller UI. Any of you folks seen that? Maybe we can, uh, I grab my Switch Pro controller and we can check out the controller UI. Mind-blowing stuff, I'm telling you. We're going to do that. We're going to try the controller mod. I just need to go grab my Switch Pro controller. All right. Here we go. Awesome. All right. What the heck is this? Oh, okay. So this data just gets ignored now. It doesn't really matter what's there, but what the heck is that? All right. Now, do we... Nothing. Still broke. But it's still using Pyrite. I think that's a clue about why it's broken. Maybe it wasn't... Pyrite, yeah. Oh, look at this. It's fallen back to this one. All right. You know what we got to do now. Bear with me, folks. We're going to fix this yet. Oh, no. I did a bad thing, though. This is no good. What's happening? I did a bad thing. Just make it stop. Yeah, so it yeah, so uh language server for Emacs has a nice feature whereby it can automatically um automatically download servers for you and I had done that in the past. Let's uh let's just delete that. Kill it with fire as they say. Okay. Take two. There we go. Yeah, see? That was instant. Wow. <laughs> Good call, Ifan. I really appreciate that. Look at this. Ba-ba. <laughs> Thank you. Oh, man, you saved me so much headache. Wow. Whoop. Don't try that at home. You know what's awesome, too, is I bet you don't even use Emacs. You're using some other editor, but because of the magic of having something like Language Server as a protocol, we can all benefit from the same collective knowledge. I love it. Moving on. <laughs> Let's get the stream notes back on, shall we? Wow. Use Helix. Oh, okay, never even heard of that. Helix editor, huh? 
Helix text editor. Let's DDG that real quick. Hmm. I'm a big fan of ASCII Enema, and that's what this is right here. I can tell already. That's a terminal recording. Wow. Gives me Emacs feels for sure. Keyboard driven, I assume. <laughs> cool. Yeah, Emacs has stuff like that with multiple cursors. Nice. I love it. I love seeing new, powerful keyboard driven editors, you know, in the world where Visual Studio Code eats everybody's favor because it's awesome. Um, I like seeing stuff like this. Cool. Hey, thanks for mentioning that, Afane. Helix, try it out. Man. I'm I'm sorry, but this is I got to go back here and Ah. <sighs> Fantastic. Look at that. Just what I needed. This will make my life quite a bit easier. So what we should have seen earlier, I'm just going to go back to here. What we should have seen earlier was something like this. Mod. Come on. <laughs> now we're not going to do it. Wow. It's broken in this file. All right, I'm not gonna tempt fate for now. But when I was working on this earlier, oh no. I have done, okay, whew. I had done a bad thing. When I was working on this earlier, we should have had my editor doing the thing that I wanted to do by suggesting a good change. Um, should have suggested, you know, usage notes there. All right, well, so going back to this. We did a little bit of this. Now let's do a little bit of that. And where we left off last time, I actually don't remember. So we're going to have to pull that up. And uh, we'll erase that out of there. Okay, well, we're back at the top here, but let's hop on over to GitLab and see where we left off. Am I blind? Yeah, I am. All right, yeah, I did a bit of issue cleanup over the past couple of days. We're down to 61 issues here, which feels really great. Before I did that cleanup, we were in sort of the 90s, the high 90s, but there was just some stuff that was either already fixed, didn't make sense to fix now, like old changelog stuff from like a year ago, um, and just other things, you know, so I want to keep open issues down to stuff that's actually meaningful and need to be fixed, so including stuff like this. All right, well, uh, let's see what the last thing I added was here. Nice, this is a pretty handy feature. See, GitLab, as kind of annoying as the UI is most of the time, there's some nuggets of cool stuff in here, and we can see the last time I edited this, we added some good stuff of Melodies and Moonlight by our friend Detail Devil, OAAB Market, recommended to me by Detail Devil. Thank you for that. Um, Hanging Gardens of Saran, another really great one from the Mod Jam. Herdrax. Do you remember working on this? I think we need to make an issue for this so we don't forget to do it. But as I recall, Herdrax solved this one by editing uh, this script. 
a simple rotation broke the whole thing. Heron, Heron Ancestral Tomb, um, another excellent mod jam entry. That one's done. Cool. Thank you. We're going to want to ship that somehow, be it in the total overhaul patches or something else. If you want to have your own, you know, patch collection, by all means, we want to get that out there, though. Ah, uh, yeah. Speaking of get that out there, though, this one just... Mamea Awakening is looking smooth. Her drag says, I agree. I just love that one. I love the um, thoughtful takes on the dungeons that we're privileged to have now, you know, including that one, including Haran Ancestral Tomb. This one, if you haven't seen it yet, has a climax that's just... Um, what can I say? It's great. Oh, okay, yeah, I did actually hear about that. Thank you. Detail Devil says, Seeloff is working on overhauling Heron Ancestral Tomb at the moment. I mean, if I'm going to be honest, I can't even imagine that because the thing was so awesome to begin with. So, wow, I'm a little hyped. That's great. Maybe by the time we launch the changes to the mod list, it'll be ready and we can take another look at it. Um, and I'm sure, you know, I'm sure it's going to be amazing. It will be a separate tomb, even. Ooh, okay, wild. Yeah, Gonzo says wild. Reflecting my thoughts exactly. Um, man, I just reached for my coffee mug. <laughs> All right. Um, yeah, so Haran Ancestral Tomb. Uh, there are some things that I added, though. Let's just quickly do a scan here. Oh, yeah, we got our fishing spear fix by Sophie. Thank you so much for that. There's also the TR robe fix that you graciously shared with us. Um, I have a note to make an issue for that. We're going to add that, but you can find that somewhere up here in my setup. <laughs> but yeah, props, Sophie, and thank you so much for that. We'll want to get those out there. What else do I got, though? There was something. Patch the dead guys. Okay, nice. Should I get pull? Uh, section 8, maybe we'll be doing another combat. Look, all right, but well, first we'll do this. I don't want to go too all over the place. All right, I'm going to do a get pull real quick. And then we'll come back to it. All right. We'll come back to it. Ah, Dwemer Lightning Rods. This is one, though, that we have to... Unfortunately, we still have the awkward bug of no LOD on Lua created stuff, but eventually we'll want to reach out to MD and offer this uh, we did look a little bit at uh, Better Bodies Wesley's Master Head Pack good, good stuff there really good stuff okay this is not new I know there was something new that I added and this is not for naught yeah okay yeah alright Quite a few um, really nice recommendations from Detail Devil. Thank you so much. Um, to start, Telvani Sea Beacons. This is one I'd never heard of. That is really nice. Um, absolutely fits. In what we're trying to do here uh, with expanded vanilla with total overhaul um, and they just look so nice at nighttime especially when you've got zester shaders jazzing up the lights you know um. <laughs> all right <laughs> indeed so yeah going in there Telvani Sea Beacons. Now let me ask you, because I put this one under landscape. <laughs> I put this one under landscape. Is that the right category? Please, let me know. I think, you know, land, when I think landscape category, I'm thinking like dotting the landscape with lights, which is literally what this one is doing, right? Like putting some stuff on the ground, stones. These are beautiful, Section 8 says. Yes, they are. Detail Devil, thank you. Yes, I think that fits. Thank you. I really appreciate that. So let's go ahead and put it up with the landscape category. I really appreciate that feedback. Naming is a known, very hard problem, and I like not being the only person thinking about this. 
Okay, landscape. Here we go. All right. Ooh, and you know what? We actually... We're going to need to update this one because... There is, I believe, Coffee Beard has forked this one into a compatible version that I now have. We'll update that too. Let's get that here. And thank you to both Glitter Gear and Coffee Beard for that. Um, yeah, here's this one. We're gonna add this one. Since we're using a couple of other mods that change that area, our friend Coffee Beard here has gone ahead and, and taken the trouble to make it fit with BCOM and other things that we got in the mix here. So yeah, this is what I got. This is what we'll be using. Um, and so major props to both of them for doing this, for creating the mod and for patching it for everybody. All right. I cannot, <laughs> I cannot copy paste correctly. There we go. Mm, yeah, Gonzo says, super nice supplement to BCOM for Balmora. And Sophie says, we should just use a texture from Met or IT if we're not already Instead of the Blood Moon Hide Replacer with SHOTN still in development, probably not worth patching. Thank you for bringing that up. And I, I agree, right? Like, I actually forgot to hit you guys up about this again. But um, I have decided basically we're removing that one. Um, you know, it's cool, but, like, it's such a janky conflict. And fine, we can patch it, you know, fine. But I honestly, like, I feel like we should reserve our patching efforts to where, like, it's really needed, you know. And uh, this is just a janky conflict. So, yeah, we're going to we're gonna remove that one. And we'll put that in here right now, actually. Thank you for bringing that up. I appreciate it. Let's go ahead and hide replacer. Yeah, it's a, it's a classic, and I think it looks good. But <laughs> when you see hide on a shelf, you know, you get the idea. It's no good. <laughs> Removed stuff. Yeah, here we go. I'm not going to link back to it, I don't think. I don't think we need to. Um, I'm going to put a note here, though. Excuse me. So that our future selves... In case we forget, excuse me again, which sometimes happens in case for our future selves, has some conflicts. Very good. And we're going to go back up here to our, our uh, landscape section. I'm actually just going to remove that completely. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Tell you what. We're not trying that at home. We're just going to copy paste. Good, good. Yeah, so thank you again, Detail Devil, for this and a couple other ones. Emacs and Morrowind. Hello, Microwave Prince. Welcome. To the stream and i hope you're having a lovely day we are as well happy modding and yeah that's true emacs the weird bizarre intersection of emacs and morrowind is right here thank you all right and yeah that's actually emacs you can see uh in the background there uh my favorite git client magic it's the best it's magic all right so again, thank you, Detail Devil, for this one, and we're going to move on to another one that Detail Devil kindly informed me about. 
marbled Zafirba Zafirba Bay. Must load before shipyards. Uh-huh, yeah. And actually, so I'm almost positive that I did that. Let's just sanity check myself. Okay, so marbled Zafirba Bay. We're on line 1090 here. Shipyards. Yeah, we are before. For sure. Thank you for bringing that up. It's a very important note. And we're going to make sure that we note that in the usage notes um, for non-mod list um, usage. So if somebody's just browsing, that information will happen to be there. Um, mod list users won't need to have that put in their faces because we will take care of that for them. But yeah, here it is. And it just adds, you know... Um, Forget how you pronounce these things. The men here, these tall stones. I don't know how to say it. I'm sorry. These things, though, puts them throughout the region, and it, you know, it's a nice uplifting of the scenery, which is a little kind of samey uh, in the region, you know. So yeah, I loved it. This with the Telvani Sea Beacons uh, was just a real nice. And there's also some uh, interesting terrain changes i noted some stuff that i thought was new yeah right here that's really nice um men here thank you Gonzo. i appreciate it i wasn't quite sure <laughs> it's not a word i use every day all right copy and let's put it in there with the note that it must load before shipyards all right There we go. Nah, I don't think we I don't think we need to put too much information there. All right. Great. Okay, let's go back to magic. And oh yeah. There is also the addition and this is a really exciting one. Let's see if we get to it. Yeah, okay. This isn't what I was thinking about, but... Uh... <laughs> uh, Detail Devil says, Ever since Shipyards, I learned my lesson of never touching the landscape editor. Yeah. It's tricky, right? It can be very tempting to paint the landscape. Um, but that's like a, just a compatibility nightmare, really. And it's one of the hardest compatibility problems to solve. We have the Merged Lands tool, which actually Gonzo has played with and managed to solve some spicy terrain conflicts with. We have tools to solve it, but right now, I like to avoid those conflicts until we can get an easy way to use that stuff in the hands of the users. So yeah, as a designer, I can appreciate the want to really jazz up the train and also the want to be compatible compatible with things so this is one um this is one of those like how was i missing this ever mods uh we're gonna take a small journey down to potato land but it's gonna be worth it i'm gonna run total overhaul and you're gonna see these beautiful better telvani crystal 4k textures uh with normal maps and an oaab data patch this stuff was just incredible Join me. Come. Sadrith Mora. Here we go. Yeah, Gonzo, that's a uh, Gonzo has a interesting question here. And a great one. Thank you for asking it. What did you think about just providing a modless specific merged lands plugin? I guess that's a pretty major burden as far as maintaining that. Well, maintaining it maybe not is, is not a huge burden per, uh, per se. The problem, though, in my opinion, is, uh, hey, Santa, welcome, my man. Hope you're having a great day. 
Um, the problem with that, though, lies in like if somebody adds one thing that makes a terrain edit that's not factored in by that, it just borks everything, you know. Um, it would produce weird results, right? And I think quite a few people actually take our mod lists and like build on top of them, you know, which is great. Um, but yeah, yeah. So much as I would like to to do something like that, I think functionally is a handy thing to do for users. Um, this is where the ML, MOMW launcher that I showed, I teased earlier, will come in handy though, right? If we can have an easy way to run the merge lands tool or anything else. Um, and Detail Devil correctly says, landscape conflicts can usually be solved with a specific load order. That's absolutely right. Negating the need for such a thing, right? Um, indeed, I wonder if we could solve, for example, the tribe unmourned problem with some load order tweaking didn't really look into that too much um oh right that's right i am not <laughs> just let me move thank you todd all right so i like a good night here we go and Despite the potato quality, which you can appreciate with my FPS counter up there, you'll know the beautiful lights, including the lit council hall, which is a recent-ish glow-in-the-dark update that is absolutely phenomenal. Just look at it. But where are we going, Johnny? We're going to look at some crystals. It's the crystal rubbing section of the stream. Here we go. And here they are. Really great. This is... And I'll pull up the mod detail page here in just a moment. Pay no attention to my crap frame rate. <laughs> just look at these crystals, though. This is hands down the best crystal model I think I've ever seen. Um, yeah, those are badass, Sophie says. And uh, I agree. <laughs> I agree. Looks so good. I'm just like mesmerized looking at them right now. But wait, there's more. Going back to glow in the dark, we can change it to daytime. And I hope it's not raining. This is supposed to start lighting up, though. Let's go outside, maybe, to instigate it. Detail Devil says, have you taken a look at of musk and myrrh and uh, murk and mussels? They add a bug musk shop. And a salvage shop to Sadrith Mora. Actually, they're loaded up right now. Um, and will be added to the 6.x update. So, yeah, thank you for asking. They're in here, my friend. Um, okay, yeah, it's a little cloudy, so that's maybe why I'm not getting the... It's a little overcast. Could be why I'm not getting the GITD. Let's go back inside, though, and just see... Well, I digress. Beautiful crystals. Let me make sure we got... I'm going to give this one more shot because you just got to see. It looks so good. The Of Trilogy is on 6.x for sure, Herdrak says. Yeah, that's a good name for it. <laughs> the Of Trilogy being, you know, a trio of excellent mods by our friend Detail Devil. There we go. Give me that sky. All right. <clears throat> okay. Enough. So how about those crystals, huh? Uh, better than, is this it? Yeah, this is it. Okay. So this is what we were just looking at. <clears throat> Thank you so much. Uh, Detail Devil says, good job. Your council house looks great. Thank you. I'm really 
uh, humbled by that. Um, you know, we've spoken privately between uh, one another, but we are both big fans of Sadrith Mora, the city. It's one of my favorite locations in the game. And yeah, this is the excellent Better Telvani Crystal mod that we were just looking at, uh, created by Seneb Ankh Neldrak. So thank you, Neldrak. Thank you for your work. Excellent, excellent work. Um, and yeah, actually, since you mentioned that detail, Devil, we got to go back. We got to go back to Sadrith Mora. I've done this before, as you can see. We got to go back to Sadrith Mora because I feel like I've done a disservice to the audience here by not showing you the lit interior during the day. I mean, you got I don't know what happened there. Maybe it was too cloudy. But Glow in the Dark just remains one of my favorite visual mods for a reason. Okay. Um, let's go in there. So this is I Heart Vanilla. We've taken a step back here. This is just basically vanilla, except for glow-in-the-dark. But I just need you folks to see this. And yeah, you can see, look, it's lit up inside here. And if we change the time of day... No more. And if we go back outside. We've got just really incredible lighting. And again, if we change it back. Got our lighting there. Let's go inside and take a look again. Whoa. Day-night switch nodes are a great thing, am I right? This is my favorite spot in the game, Detail Devil says. Right there with you, my friend. Just great. Um, and yeah, so lit interior. Um, we got to make sure that whatever configuration we end up with on Total Overhaul enables that, but uh, certainly it will. Um, yeah, good stuff. So let's go back to the list, though. And we'll put this on there. Better Telvani Crystal. Now, I don't remember what I put it down there. Oh, specifically right there even. Yeah, between the council house and the bug musk shop. Okay, really? Interesting. So your your favorite spot within your favorite city even. That's interesting. Um, I'm trying to think where my favorite spot there would be, and I don't know. I have many nostalgic places in the game, though, for sure. Uh, so where did I put this? Ob no, replacers. Yeah, I don't know. That's kind of a... It replaces the crystals. It was kind of a cop-out of a uh, of a categorization. But, um... Ah, okay. Uh, Gonzo says, I've always really liked that little island off the coast from Cool. Sounds like a great place for a player home. I think if I know which island you're talking about, it is a cozy little place. You can make a little shack. Check out Daggletail for inspiration. That's excellent player home mod from the Mod Jam. So yeah, I don't know. I'm gonna I'm gonna put it down as a replacer, and uh, we can adjust the category later on. You know. Okay. Do I even have this here? Replacers. I do. Okay. Excuse me. <laughs> Gonzo says, as far as Tolvani locations go, though, I really like the outside of Voss and the Grayslands. I do not like navigating Voss, though. <laughs> yeah, I have to agree. On the, uh, I don't mind navigating Voss, actually. The, the tower, especially the giant one, I actually don't mind. And it will be pretty cool when we can climb that tower. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> All right. Oh, it takes place in your... Oh, yeah. Oh, oh. Interesting, Herdrax. That's really interesting. Uh, and yeah, Gonzo, I'm looking at you, my man. All right. Um, And we'll note here that this has... And there is a OAB 
data patch. <laughs> Blame Baldur's Gate for the delays there. <laughs> no worries, man. Um, I probably should try Baldur's Gate 3, is what I assume you're talking about. It's what all the cool kids are playing right now when they're not playing the, co the real coolest game in the world, also known as Morrowind. <sighs> all right. <laughs> yeah. It looks great. And Larian Studios, you know, they seem to pump out some quality stuff. So, yeah. All right. Well, we managed to look at, you know, two, three mods here in this one hour. Yikes. Moving on down, though, there was more stuff that I added, I know. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, okay. This one, Blighted, Fourth Unknown's Beasts, Retextured. <clears throat> I forget who linked me to this one. So I'm sorry, somebody told me about this one. Oh, it was somebody in Discord. A kind newcomer uh, joined our channel and... Uh, linked us to this one uh, that I had never heard of. It's by Von Jangos. Another great one from Von Jangos. So thank you to the mysterious traveler from Discord who shared this with us. Um, and yeah, Detail Devil says, Fourth Unknown has the best creature replacers. I agree. And it was a really a shame, um, you know, that, I mean, it's not like a trivial thing to do that it wasn't supported by our Blighted Creatures mod. But here you go. This is what uh, Fourth Unknown Blighted looks like, in case you wondered. Look at that gnarly cliff racer. Um, it's even better in game. You just gotta see it in game. But yeah, it just looks incredible. Um, so yeah, very excited. Uh, Herdrex says, I made the mistake of hyping Gonzo up for Daggerfall Unity. You know, I've actually never played Daggerfall all the way through. And um, also have been tempted to try Daggerfall Unity. Um, the DOS one is a little hard to you know, to get into, especially when you know that Daggerfall Unity exists and is modern. So anyway, we're adding this one for sure. And if you haven't tried it, do. Loads very nicely underneath our current blighted, te uh, blighted creatures textures setup. You just plop it underneath, load the plugin afterwards. Um, M-Locks will do the right thing for you. Check it out. It's just beautiful in a disgusting way, <laughs> right? As beautiful as you can call this. <laughs> it's beautiful. Um, I went in-game, and you can actually find the um, character IDs, creature IDs, for these blighted creatures on UESP. Spawn them right in front of you so you can see them. That's the easiest way. That's what I did. You can do a place at PC console command to just spawn them right in front of you. Look at uh, the usage for that on USP also. Um, this is a Nyx Hound, my friend. Yeah, yeah. That's a Nyx Hound. You just got to try it, though. <laughs> All right. Where are we going here? Wow. So we haven't touched creatures yet, apparently. Let's do what's left of one, right? The fourth unknown um, Nyx Hound looks a bit different from the vanilla ones, but I feel like they're still really faithful uh, and a good take on them. A very good take on them, I think. All right, we need uh, creatures... Okay. Yeah, I loved this one. This was a... Yeah, Gonzo says, I really like the necrotic tissue body horror stuff, like with the Ash Ghouls. Yeah, absolutely. It fits really well, and they look so good in-game, too. Really superb. Um, okay, so did we get to... Wing, uh, this is another Mod Jam game. Winged Twilight Rebalance. Um, I really like this one because it was one of those uh, kind of subtle tweaks to the game that I didn't know that I wanted, but uh, allows the Winged Twilight to become stronger over the course of the game. Three difficulty levels. I Heart Vanilla. 
Expanded vanilla. Hey, I like that. That's pretty cool. This mod is for those who like my Atronach rebalance, which we will be looking at. Chose a creature that's most suitable for the theme in the shadows. Also, some verticality there with the flying. Uh, <laughs> I wonder where those names come from. Yeah, I'm a little humbled, uh, honestly, that they're using them. So, in a nutshell, without going into all of this, we have the teacher. Or we have the creature scaling in its ability, but it can also. There's an optional version that I definitely recommend using to make the Winged Twilight actually fly. I mean, they got wings, you know. So anyway, um, in the spirit of rebalancing the game and making it more reasonable in various ways and challenging as well, uh, you know, I think we really want this one. Uh, I've been playing with it and I like it, so it's going in. There you go. And we will be taking a look at the Atronach rebalance as well. Excuse me. Coffee's coming back up. <laughs> All right. Great. Hmm. Cryptic note I left for myself. Let's see what this is. And we're going to close off the stream by taking another look at Section 8's Combat mod. Oh, yeah. Anybody use this one by RP and various stitched together? Vanilla Friendly Creatures and Undeads expansion. How do you folks feel about adding this to the mod lists? Anybody use it? Is it any good? I mean, obviously more is better. But, I mean, do we actually... Does this fit with what we're doing? Um, I'm intrigued. Yeah. I'm going to put it in the chat for y'all. If you never tried it, do... Um, and yeah, I haven't even downloaded it yet, um, but I've just, you know, I'm like morbidly curious. A spawning wildly if at different sizes, herders, natch glowing, sounds pretty cool, you know, a landro. We ha so we have some of these, right? Oh, AAB adds this one. <laughs> Spiders, I feel like a lot of these are actually covered by OAAB, new beetles and stuff. I mean, these all seem like they would fit really well with the game. I don't know. Sophia Sunshine says, I like friendly creatures a lot. Velk from Tamriel Rebuilt are my favorite. Adds to the atmosphere. Okay. That's good to know. I'm glad that you played with it and that you like it. I'll probably install it later then. Um, it's going in. Very, very good. All right. Well, shall we go ahead and take a little combat break? Huh? I want to. All right. We're up to date. Back to the cave. Hmm? All right. We'll put my trusty sword named after a basketball player. All right. By the power of the three pointer. Hiya. Here we go. Do 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 do. That's right. <laughs> well, it seemed like it worked pretty well. Section eight, it worked that time. Yeah, <laughs> Final Fantasy music. I can't help it. I'm a JRPG boy. What can I say? All right. Well, hang on. I know I said we're gonna try it one more time. It works. Yeah, we're gonna try it one more time again. Without my super cheaty character, though, because the poor bandit didn't have a chance. All right. All right. I'm still going to keep my basketball player sword. Let's try it again. Huh? Huh. All right. Big mode. Here we go. Oh, oof. Yikes. No good. All right, that's fine. We'll just put some stuff down. This is how you know it's going to be a fair fight. 
Uh, yeah, all right. As I say, marching in, <laughs> smiting bandits like, <laughs> like it's 89, yeah. As I say, marching in with my basketball player sword. Okay, and uh, as a reminder too, I believe we're playing on OpenMW 0 0.48. Let's see here. Yeah, no profiler. OpenMW 0 0.48. Man, gotta love that <laughs> snail pace that we walk at with five, what are we, 30 speed, okay. <gasps> Santa, you still there? What we're looking at here is a, a turn-based combat mod for Morrowind. As Todd intended. <laughs> Like, you ever just wanted to play turn-based Morrowind? I know I have. Oh, did I break it by going in without a sword again? No, okay. You waste a turn. Oh, it doesn't take a turn. Okay, it is now my turn. Dirty lurker, get out of here. You haven't even played Morrowind. Who even are you? So this is, there we have it, turn-based combat in Morrowind. Man, nice work, Section 8. This is really cool. This was just a dream in Todd's, a sparkle in Todd's eye yesterday, and today it's a reality. You can do the time to text you. Oh, really? Oh, yeah, that's right. If you double-click it right, okay. <laughs> that's too cool. Fumble. Ugh. So I take it this probably wouldn't be compatible with Sothas, by the way, or are you factoring that in? Probably is a, a little overlap there, you know. Um, this is so cool, though. Nice work. I'm so pumped to see this a reality, you know. Uh, <laughs> this is exciting. I got no skills, so... This will probably last all, this fight will probably last all day at the rate we're going, because I've got, uh, I should really be punching her. Yeah, there we go. So there you have it. Morrowind is finally becoming Baldur's Gate like for realsies and not just like so I take it you probably are going to want to um make it work with open nevermind uh but yeah then we will really have Neverwinter Nights Baldur's Gate you know going on here so wow cool um I'm going to deploy the site momentarily um but yeah wow so we got a nice rounded out day here on the stream i thank you all for joining um i think we're gonna wrap it up at this tomorrow come back we're gonna do more work on the refactor of the cfg generator actually chipping away at that we'll add some more mods in and maybe play some more balder wind i don't know but uh y'all have a great day thanks again for joining and happy modding cheers